Greetings, good evening, good morning, wherever you're at. I'm Patrick here at Martlet Games, and uh, we will be exploring the aftermath of Season 1 of Psycho Pomps Incorporated. Uh, as a brief recap, uh, the Psycho Pomps are a traveling coterie of Hakata, uh, comprised of uh, some different bloodlines. They ply their trade uh, dealing with the spirit realm for uh, I'll say susceptible mortals and kindred who don't have access to the Hikata's unique brand of oblivion. But their last official paying job went sideways. People died in particular at Putinesca in Newark, New Jersey. Um, everyone had a hand in that. And then the uh, BBEG of the first uh, story here uh, was exiled back to the Shadowlands with a, uh, a very powerful, or the Coterie's Mala getting taken along for the ride. Now, we're going to jump in here with uh, Cherubina, but uh, I'll go ahead and have uh, Kat introduce herself real quick, and then we'll get going. Hi, my name is Kat Smith. Um, I'm playing Cherubina Orsini, and she has like 10 other aliases anyways. I'm not going to go through them all right now. <laughs> and I'll see if I can remember how to role player because it's been a little bit of time. That's totally fine. There's and this and this is Zelda that I'm petting in and out. You can see her pop in. She 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 wants attention. So doggos are always welcome. Yeah, doggos, cats. Your 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 fur friends are totally fine on stream. So. We're going to fast forward a day or two after the events of Ipswich. The Psycho Pomps have made a little bit of progress getting the hell away from the town, leaving the whereabouts of Larchevaux in question. It was clear that he wasn't going to be coming back that night, and... After the second night, he made no uh, appearance. The Coterie decided it's time to hit the road. Now, there are pressing obligations that the Coterie has to deal with back in Newark. Uh, between the unexplained disappearance of uh, one of the, uh, we'll say, less intelligent Putinesca in the city. Um, and some, some entanglements with the local tower. The Coterie has to go back. Now, the Coterie has made roughly, you know, a, a, a solid day's worth of travel from Ipswich. And when I say a yes, full solid day, Tadio hit the ground running as soon as the sun was up. And the sun sets in a truck stop parking lot where Tadio had pulled over to catch a little bit of shut eye before his nightly responsibilities become a thing. Yeah. Now, when Cherry wakes up, there is a text message on her phone. Yes. From uh, how how do you have Grandma show shown up in your? Uh, how do you have her listed in your caller ID? Is, um, is it under Nona? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not going to say Nona. Hang on, I got to see what her name was. Uh, ah. Her name in my phone's to not be like, and for anybody to call her. Uh, Percy, because her name is Percy Fatina, first name. So she's she's not she's she's Nona sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, other times, it's Percy because 
sometimes you got to get a hold of the one that everybody knows as by their name by her name so yep and in this case here you do see a text message yep. uh from percy mm-hmm. uh Call me before, I uh, believe uh, there's seven hour difference between uh, the Eastern time zone and uh, Venice. Yep. Uh, so we will say uh, you, have an in- you have an instruction to call her before uh, uh, it, would, it would break out to 9 p.m. local time uh, before uh your sire would have to retire for the day yeah what time is it uh it's about seven o'clock right now so you've got a little bit of time um when you awaken uh your sisters are going about their own nightly business that they have to deal with uh tario is right there when you wake up Uh uh-huh uh, uh, ma'am, I'm, uh, I'm, I could go for a bite to eat and I don't have any cash on me right now. I'm, could you come yes. in and, okay. She goes and does that, lets him go and eat, um, lets him go and eat and just like relax. As much as Tadio the ghoul can relax with three uh we'll say uh you all i mean you're technically his domitor but the other two do have their own influence over poor todd (laughs) uh you see tadio enter the truck stop and it's one of those greasy spoons that is on all of you know it's listed in all of the regional magazines as eat here uh, because, you know, they pay for the ad placement and uh, the touristy season. Uh, we're still setting this uh, kind of, we'll say, mid fall. So yeah. there's so there's uh, plenty of tourists still in New England making the trip to watch the leaves turn. And the truck stop parking lot is pretty full up of other RVs. Uh, everyone else seems to have had the the same idea as Todd, and you can see that the diner itself is pretty full, and so Todd's gonna be a minute. Um, but the uh, your other sisters have. Why should roll to see if I'm hungry? Waking up. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and give me a rouse check. Hang on a minute. Let me get my my yarn away. I don't have any D10s up here. I usually have D10s sitting up here, but not today. You're fine. The the, the bag of holding for the dice. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, don't worry. I, I'm fine. I rolled a six. Okay. All good in the hood. So, you get the impression that Nyx may or may not be hunting at this truck stop, and... Celia is setting up her tent outside, trying to scrabble, you know, uh, some odd customers here. So you have the RV to yourself. Uh, what do you intend on doing? Are you going to go in and join Tadio? Or are you going to call home, so to speak? Call home. Mm. So you, you call Percy. Nona. When she answers it, she answers Nona. Mm-hmm. So. And it rings several times. You ha- you hear a click, and there's the unmistakable clicking sound of uh, the powers that be back in Venice doing what they can to make sure that the line is secure as possible. I uh, should let people know Nona is actually Cherry's great grandmother, mm-hmm. and she's actually looks like she's in her early forties. Mm-hmm. She's she was she was one of those Giovanni that they wanted to have her spit out a few kids before she got turned. Got to mm-hmm. keep got to keep the bloodline going somehow, and. You do eventually hear 
Nona's voice. Depends on uh, how her personality is going mm. and is how she how she calls her. Because mm-hmm. she came up with like you can call me this if you hear my voice in this. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. She's I'm just like. Ah, Karina, thank you for calling in such a timely manner. How are you doing tonight, dear? I'm good. I just had to go pay uh, Tadio's uh, meal because he didn't have any cash on him. Are you uh, Are you making sure to take care of him, though? I'm trying to take care of him, but however, he has been pushing himself too hard and not asking me to... Uh, stop more frequently. So, uh, just uh, just remember that uh, Tario he does have his talents, and you need to make sure that you do not uh, use him up too soon. Yes. If he if he does a good enough job, he may eventually be embraced into the Hikata. Uh huh. Now, Karina, you have caused quite a stir bit here back home, and I just... I had some questions. Sure. Uh, your cousins in New Jersey, they speak of some complications. Uh-huh. Would you care to go into detail about that for me? They essentially brought in a kind without ghouling them. Understood. And, and he had was it under the impression that he would get embraced. Those idiots. No. Like he was, he's like not ghouled at all. I don't know if anybody ghouled him or the locals there took care of him I will I will have to check in on that uh, myself uh, I did get a phone call uh, several phone calls actually um, asking about the whereabouts of uh, one of their cousins and I of course have no information to give them and I'm sure that uh, if there was a problem that you and your other cousins uh, took care of it Yes, uh, there was a problem. He was the one that brought in the human, or the kind, without uh, telling him about us. Ah, understood. And so he decided to take care of some family. That uh, how 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 do you say a smart move? As far as protecting us goes. Uh-huh. And what of the uh, what of the situation regarding the local tower? There, I've heard rumblings about that as well. I can't remember. Mm. Uh, the uh, as a refresher, uh, yes. the the local Putinesca in Newark, the the one there 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 is an entanglement with the Anarchs. And yes. the local Camarilla kind of considered that a breach of the promise, which uh-huh. is the uh, the the agreement between the Camarilla and the erstwhile Giovanni of uh, non-interference. Yeah. And uh, that deadline is, uh, or the the promise is set to expire here in the next uh, six years. I believe uh, 2028 is when the promise is supposed to go bye-bye. Uh-huh. Uh, that is what she relays to... Uh, she can't tell what kind of voice she has. If she says Percy, she says Nona. Nona, she's going to just say Nona. And I, this is what happened, Nona. <laughs> uh, there's the, the... The troubles with... The Camarilla are just starting. This is just the beginning of... <sighs> Unfortunately, I, I see a few a few bloody years ahead. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so you can blame the Putinesca. Sorry. 
Ben. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> the, at least those ones for being misguided. Yes, and if you, uh, uh, I feel like they could use some better uh, training from somebody. Yes. Uh, how uh, nice of you to volunteer for the responsibility. Uh, you are going back to Newark, no? Y yes, kind of have to. Well, I, uh, I, I think it would be best if you would to act on my behalf, so to speak, to help get the family back together and get them in line. Sure. Yes. Uh and I'm sure that your sisters would be very pleased to help you out in this endeavor. Yep. Not that they have a choice. <laughs> oh, no, not that at all. We have a choice in the matter, but I will definitely do this and get the, at least that Camry uh, liking us again. Well, I, I get I get the impression that there's going to be an uphill battle for everyone, uh, including mm -hmm. them. I'm sure, though, that if you if you prove to be useful, that the the local Camarilla will or Camarilla will be a little more uh, pliable. And why while, while we don't have any designs on Newark or New York by any stretch the the family does still try to base its operations there in New York City and it would be very disadvantageous if we did not have the access to the resources that we have come to rely on yes now the next matter that I wish to discuss with you is of a sensitive nature but what of Larshava? What happened with him? Uh, got sucked into the, uh, Shadowlands. I was afraid of that. I've... The... The... The spirits that I myself have control over, they, they speak of a disturbance with the, uh, the strands of fate and that Larshavo's child was at the middle of this mess. Is that true? Would, I, would she know that? Mm -hmm. Okay, is this the whole thing with the house? Yep. Uh, we got called to take care of a matter, or no, we got called to this house in uh, it was Louisiana. In Louisiana. I can't remember where it's at. Um, and uh, come to find out the it wasn't what we thought it was, and it was a setup from Milner? The Milliners, yep. The Milliners on our group, or coterie. Matter day. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, lady we're supposed to be helping was, uh, inhabited by a, what would it be called? Uh, uh a specter. A specter. A specter of a, of a vampire. Of a, a kin, uh, one of our own. What was his name again? Uh... I honestly can't remember the the name of the specter either. It's been. Well, a I know he was a Milner as well. Mm -hmm. He he was he was one of the family patriarchs. Yeah, yeah he was. A... Mm -hmm. Yeah. See the uh, after the family reunion, I knew that we shouldn't trust those bastardos, but they still we need their money, especially after what happened to the mausoleum. I will be keeping a closer eye on that family from here. Now the the rest of the family as a whole that I I speak with here, they 
They assured me that uh, Larchevaux is safe, but I... I am not able to sense him out there in the Shadowlands. There's too much uh, static in, uh, interference there. It's it's hard to see. Okay. And I've heard that there's still a spiritual disturbance there, and there will be for quite some time. So I would uh, I would advise uh, you and your uh, your cousins there to avoid going back to Ipswich, if at all possible. Okay. Now, Ooh, don't want to go back there, anyways. Yes, uh, avoid the place as if your own life depended on it, Karina. What if I said, never mind. Oh, no, speak. What if I sent some of the Camarilla up there? See, that... Uh, Karina, the, the, the issue with that there, unfortunately, we can still prove ourselves useful to the Camarilla as long as they do not know our secrets and how we do things. And... Uh-huh. Letting them know that there is something that they can still get their hands on and research is not a good idea. Well, I was more thinking that the disturbance would take them away, but I guess it, it won't. So, no, it's the uh, I was it a I, I I hear about the lighthouse. Is that where is that where things took place? Yes, yes, yes. That is where they they took place with. That Milner lady. Larchavo did this really cool thing to her ghoul. <laughs> that's all I can say. I saw the aftermath afterwards, but that's a really cool thing that he did to the to her ghoul. Um and then there was oh, what is this? A a piece of knob there? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Mm, the the bad blood between the the peace and all ban the harbingers is you know as as much as we as much as we all tout the family re, family reunion being a benefit there's still way too many angry bodies in the mix there's still revenge killings going on and if the peace and all ban the milliners have joined forces that can only mean trouble for the rest of us. And I... This... If you come across any other piece of knob or milliners, I need you to please send word home as soon as you can. Yes, I will. The rest that I have my fingers on, they are able... They're easily controlled or surveilled. So... Any strays need to be taken care of. Is that understood? That is understood very much so. Try not to kill any more Putinaska, please. It's bad for the family. They need to stop bringing in... (laughs) That one branch, it seems. Bringing in... Should you actually just say humans? Humans! And telling them what we are. Too true, and that's why I trust that you will get them in line. Yes, I will uh, definitely get them in line. You speak with my voice. Is that understood? I yes, I under I understand you. Yes. And I also will hold you accountable if this does not progress as how it should. Is that also understood? That is that is one hundred completely understood, Nona. Very well, Karina. Uh, I have one last thing that I must attend to before the sun comes up. Uh-huh. And I bid you a good night. Good evening. And then the line, the line goes dead. Now, you are sitting here by yourself in the RV. Uh-huh. And Nona's put a pretty big task in your lap. What's kind of going through Cherry's head right now? 
she's like, I'm going to have to learn court politics. No, <laughs> that's all she can think about. She's like, I don't know anything about Camarilla politics. I know a little bit about Elysium, but now I can't get the politics of it. <laughs> she doesn't even know the politics of her own clan. Just the, <laughs> not all of them, some of them. The, the Respect your elders is <laughs> one big thing. Well, unless you, you feel like uh, having a family and and taking out what's his name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, got old Uncle Augie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and yeah. <laughs> now you know that Nona was one of the one of the few. She wasn't she wasn't uh, old enough to be considered Anziani by any stretch of the imagination, but she was. If the Anziani were like the the silent generation or the greatest generation, uh, known as known as definitely in that 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 hard boomer category, and yeah. uh, when it came to that particular age group, when the family reunion popped off, it was flip a coin to figure out which side they're going to land on, uh-huh. and known it was one of the smart ones, and she picked the winning side before things got too bad. <laughs> so no, Nona's definitely got a lot more clout in the family now compared to what it was like pre-reunion. Yeah. And now that uh, Cherry has been basically given a blank check to represent her when it comes to dealing with the uh, the Putinescos back in Jersey, Cherry's got some pretty big responsibilities on their shoulders on top of dealing with the Camarilla. Now, Tadio, you see, is just sitting at the you're looking through the windows of the of the truck stop, uh-huh. and you see that Tadio has gotten his food and he is inhaling the plate. And he's actually, it seems like he's flagging down the waitress for another, for another, uh, helping of food. <laughs> Gotta send him to Disney World after this. <laughs> uh, he does eventually, uh, get his fill. Nix is still out. Celia is actually got a pretty decent line of customers waiting outside her tent. So Celia's going to be making a little extra money tonight. Good. Tadio does come back to the RV, though, and uh-huh. he joins you in the back, lets out a huge belch, pats his stomach. He's, uh, if you bother smelling the air, he definitely smells like, you know... It, the greasy spoon. Greasy spoon. The the kind of stench that you only get walking into a diner that like their their exhaust system probably hasn't been cleaned in the past ten years. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, that that oh Oh, that cheeseburger was amazing. Oh that that yeah, the, the tourist magazine was right. They've got great food here. Oh so Hey, uh, about everything that's happened, Mm -hmm. um, is Celia going to be okay? I'm not certain. Okay, guys, I mean, he was scary as hell, and if he's gone right now... Mm -hmm. I mean, that... I mean, I'm scared. I'm going to tell him that I talked to Nona um, and tell relay to him what she, you know, mm-hmm. felt about the that part. He's asking about Larchevo, so... Mm-hmm. Oh, so... Okay, well, he's alive then? Seems, seems alive in retrospect, yes. Okay. Um, he, he, he's alive like we, someone's gonna have to fish him out of there or he'll 
jump out himself. I don't know. Can I, 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 I mean, I don't understand how all of that works, but I mean, if he could get out, you, I, you'd think he would have gotten out by now. Might also have to employ of another shadow dancer. Oh. Like a strong shadow dancer, not like Gotcha. She's implying it to, towards the Lasombra. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, um, one last thing before we, uh, before we get going for the night. Yeah. Um, I hate asking, but I could really go for a fix right now. Oh, not, yeah. Not, I was not, just thinking that. Yeah, not not the. Uh, I'm 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 done with the pills. Oh, good. I'm, no, I know what yeah. you're actually talking about. So mm. she takes out a small knife that she usually keeps in her like like in a hidden pocket in her shirt. Mm -hmm. She takes it out. She just does the <sighs> and Tadio. Uh, almost immediately latches on, like mm -hmm. a, like a like a like a, like a, a hungry baby, and yep. he is gonna need to make a willpower check. <laughs> okay. Uh oh, I have to slap him. Yeah, you're gonna have to slap him. He's not going to let go voluntarily. I'm gonna. Not well. <sighs> Let him go. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Dump strength. Why do I always make it dump strength to strength? You can either give me a strength and brawl or a dex and athletics to get him off. Whichever one of those is better for you. It'd be dexterity because all that is is I don't have any brawl. I have a larceny. I have firearms. I don't have anything. Okay. Okay. That's one success. That's two successes. Okay, which is it, it, that's enough. Yeah. And so, how, are you? Um, since since you use dexterity here for the the base for the pool, how do you just, dex? How do you dexterously break him off? This can be jump done. Up really, jump up really fast and kind of go. Bleh! And he. <clears throat> He's he's wiping his around his mouth, wipe, licking his fingers. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, I'm shit. I'm sorry. Oh, guess it has been too long. Yeah, I was I was getting a little, I was getting a little stretched thin with we've we've been busy and I'm I'm really he he looks like he's on the verge of tears. I'm Set, really sorry. I'll I go. Set a reminder in your phone. Oh, right. Um, he actually pulls out his phone and he... All right, I've got this set for doctor's appointment. Doctor's appointment, yeah. In a, in a month? Oh, Two well. weeks? I can never remember. Uh, it, uh, mechanic, it's uh, basically moon to moon. So okay, twenty eight so. days ish. Yeah. Um, so you could definitely, uh, we could definitely have it set for uh, probably three weeks out. Yeah. That that'd be that'd be a good solid uh, solid upkeep. Now that is of course going to be dependent on you keeping Tadio from having to get too busy. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. So eventually. Uh, Celia comes back in. Nyx returns from wherever she disappeared to. And Kay knows if there's going to be another news report popping off in this neck of the woods here. But uh, everyone's loaded up. Tadio starts the RV. And the cycle pumps continue their journey back to Newark. Mm -hmm. There'll be some more stops along the way, though. But this is where we will wrap up Cherry's little epilogue here. Uh, we have the uh, 
We have the others coming directly after this. So we're just mashing everything together into one episode. Uh, so next up is going to be, uh, I believe we are going to have Celia's followed by Nix's followed by Larchavos. So everyone will get a taste of Larchavo here at the very end. Um, now, uh, Kat, do you want to go ahead and uh, kind of tell us uh, who you are again and where you're going to be, et cetera, and so forth? And we'll move onward and upward. I am Kat. I play the uh, Giovanni Cherry, Cherubina. I don't want to go through other al aliases because she has like nine other ones. That's what you get for having a name like Cherubina. You get like 10 aliases. Mm -hmm. um, this will have already aired, but on the 27th, I'm playing in a, or would have played in a uh, Jasper's game day over on Vancouver by night. Uh, played a Tremere named Eugenia for the first time ever, other than just and not as an SPC. Awesome. Do I have anything else coming up besides this? I don't know. Something might pop up. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna be talking about that other thing here once we once we stop the recording here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there. Uh, you you all will be seeing cat. Uh, here and there on the channel as uh, things progress here. But uh, yeah, uh, you're going to be at GaryCon. Oh, yeah. I'll be at GaryCon the 24th. Well, yeah, the 24th to the 27th. And I'm running my Vampires Play D&D &D game in person there that I ran for Vancouver by Night twice and their Changeling game. Um, so three times for people over there. And uh We'll see how that goes. I have one spot available still right now. Probably not by this time this airs. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Hang tight. We've got the next epilogue coming like right up here. So uh, you'll get a little nice fade to black dissolve and then the next epilogue. So uh, thanks everyone. And yeah, we'll be right back here with another installment. Alrighty, and now it's time for our second installment here for the epilogues. And joining us here is Rosie. Rosie, go ahead and say hi to everybody. Hello, I am Rosie, regular size mom. And tonight I am playing Celia Greenwood, the Semeti con woman fortune teller. <laughs> And I will, I will be uh, up to my usual storyteller shenanigans. But, uh, so we're gonna pick up a few days after the incidents in Ipswich. And Celia's had some stuff to deal with. <laughs> and some stuff to, to process. Her sire is missing, and uh, Celia is one of those few rare kindred who actually have a positive relationship with their sire. But she's got to keep the bills paid somehow. And as the Coterie is continuing their journey back to New Jersey to we'll say uh, talk at length with the, uh, the Camarilla there. Tadio has pulled the RV into one of those small towns in New England where the population triples in the summertime and then eventually peters starts to peter out from Labor Day going forward. Uh, we're setting the this uh, is taking place still relatively in the fall. The leaves are turning and this is uh, a fair that the locals put on as kind of a 
final hurrah to the tourist season and also a uh, one last attempt to get all of the outside money into the economy as possible before sending the annoying tourists back home where they belong. <laughs> Uh, this is a, a more rustic affair compared to the the carnival down in Pensacola, which seems so long ago now. But Nyx is off doing her thing, and Cherry is, uh, we'll say, showing Tadio around, getting some quality time in with her ghoul, leaving Celia alone in her tent, working. You are just now finishing up with one of your last customers for the night. Uh, he's a older, balding, somewhat medium-built man. And he had some concerns about his kid's future. In particular, if his son was ever going to get his act together, and if he would just stop screwing around on that damn TikTok and get a real job. And... Celia usually finds herself not necessarily reading the cards so much as acting as a very unlicensed shoot from the hip therapist. <laughs> uh, she thinks of it as um, a little bit of uh, sugar helps the medicine go down. Okay. She'll give the uh, hard pill when she has to, but um, People come to her with the hard questions they don't want to actually ask themselves, even though they know the answers. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, we'll say, uh, vaguely helpful advice have the cards provided this customer tonight? <laughs> that your son will find his way. He is searching for himself right now, but he he's, he's, he's going to be okay. Well, the, I mean, the, the, what's that card that you drew? The the Fool? I mean, that, that sums him up just right, but... It's not always negative. Oh. Oh, um, okay. I mean, this and is... And here with the other cards, and she points at, like, the five other cards she has laid out, I think it's a very positive thing. I wouldn't worry. Just give him a little time. And... He's he's sitting there kind of you can see him playing mental tennis with both sides of the issue. And then he reaches into his jacket pocket and he pulls out his wallet and he slides over your payment with a little extra. He gets up with the <clears throat> Well, I mean, I, I'll just give him a shot and we'll just, we'll just see what happens. But, uh, it smells nice in here. What is that? Uh, it's a little bit of crushed lavender. It's just really soothing and it helps us open ourselves a little bit. Can you get this at Bed Bath & Beyond? It's, this smells you really You can get nice. something like it. You can also get like those cute little animal pillows that you heat up in the microwave and they smell really nice and they're really good for cramped muscles. Oh, uh, I, I, well, thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to talk to the missus about getting something like this for home. This is really nice, but... <laughs> Thank you, and I'll stop taking up your time, and you have a good night. You too. You're not taking up my time. I'm glad that I was here to answer your questions. Have a good night. And he nods, and he leaves. So, Celia, what's, what's kind of your headspace right now? I'm glad I have something to focus on. <laughs> um... We're normally busy, 
we normally do some interesting things for the family. Uh, no one's reached out to us since uncle's gone. So I don't really know what to do next. I guess, I guess Cherry will figure that out. And you know that Cherry spoke to someone back home almost immediately after the incident in Ipswich, but she's kept it close to her chest and hasn't really divulged much other than the the higher-ups in the family are concerned. Nothing to be too worried about, but there's a lot of things that have shaken loose over the past week. And everyone is kind of caught up in a bind. Now, it's been a few minutes since the uh, previous customer has left. And you could have swore that there were a few more people outside waiting. But no one's coming. Uh, You get up to start packing things up for the night. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you hear a voice from outside the flap of your tent. And it's a voice that you haven't heard for quite a long time. You still have time for one more customer? I don't know if I can answer any of your questions, but come on in. And after being invited, in walks Riley, a former current question mark (laughs) ex-fiance bad penny that keeps showing up that's uh, an apt (laughs) description for for Riley now it's like I said it's been a few years yeah Mm -hmm. it could have been a few more yeah (laughs) but he's wearing uh, his riding leathers it's the weather's still nice out. He's still tooling around on his motorcycle. Uh, unlike uh, some of the uh, the rubs, as they're called, uh, Riley's leathers are actually pretty well worn, cracking from the sun in some spots. Uh, he's got his long hair tied back. Uh, skin is definitely uh, weather beaten. And of course, he hasn't aged today. So he's still getting his Vitae from somewhere. But he sits down and lounges back in the chair. Well, I don't really need the cards right now. Just wanted to see you. It's been a while. Wanted to see how you've been doing. She looks at him with like a vague sort of and continues putting her stuff away since he doesn't want a reading. She's like, well, that's... My my sire's trapped in the Shadowlands. Uh, I I was supposed to die, I didn't. I still think I, I don't, I think I fixed that. Fate might still be mad at me. You know, it's normal. And he's, uh, he starts twirling uh, suspent brass casing from a 9mm bullet. And he's tumbling it across his fingers, 
scooping it back around, tumbling it across again. Yeah, I've been uh, following you all since Pensacola. Really? Yeah. Uh, that long. And this is the first time you're saying hi. I didn't want to get too close. I didn't know how pissed you were going to be if I turned up. And I mean, I can see things as well as you. And I knew that you were in some shit. And I didn't, uh, I didn't trust you to have your, uh, your friends not rough me up or kill me. So I didn't know what kind of stress you were under. My sisters would have only hurt you as much as I told them to. And I'm as annoying as you are. I have no reason to want you dead. Well, that's reassuring for now. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I don't talk with the camis for obvious reasons, but, uh, yeah, there's, uh, are you all going back to New Jersey? Yeah, we, uh, took care of a little something a little quickly, um, because we had to go deal with what was happening up north and uh, we're heading back to clean up a little bit. Yeah, I've... Uh... There's been a lot of Anarchs killed over the past week. Anarchs? Well, yeah. I guess it's not super surprising. <sighs> We were called in because... <laughs> Do you know what a Putin mask is? Unfortunately. <laughs> uh, one was involved with the Anarchs and one got killed. Well, he didn't get, he got, you know, long sleep. Gotcha. Uh, well, we had to get called in to see what we could do about that. We did get him released, uh, but he... He kind of earned it, so we took care of that. Which is a shame, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me that the Camarilla is retaliating now that they know some other things have happened. Yeah, they... Uh, the word on the street is... You, you all aren't in any major trouble from what I've heard, but there's some... There's some bills that you're expected to pay from what I've heard. On um, who, who's got the tab running? Someone in the cam. Honestly, I thought we did them pretty solid, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, actually, one of the, the keep a Charleston owes us a favor. So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I, Never met the never met the guy and my boss he doesn't associate with the tower all that much either. So yeah, just look, you can take my word for it, you can be skeptical, just don't anticipate a warm welcome when you get there. Now I saw the the red strings in the sky, and that's kind of how I was following you guys. What happened up there? She's like, uh, she's made herself some tea, which she's obviously not going to drink but um, just to sort of smell. And she sort of slides a mug over to him just because like, I don't know, whatever. And he, he uh, will actually drink it as you talk. And she's sort of like, got by the handle of the mug, sort of turning it around in a little circle. And she's, she's kind of fidgeting. She's like, nothing good. Uh, 
stuff that's kind of, well, it's definitely beyond our pay grade. We just got stuck in it and uh, it had to be taken care of fast. No one else could get in. Uh, that's, that's about it. Yeah, I uh, been waiting for y'all here. I figured the carnival would be starting up soon. Figured you'd all be looking to, or at least you would be looking to ply your trade. Uh, no, I stayed the hell away from this Ipswich. I could smell the trouble up there. Hmm. Yeah, it was uh, one of the dicier situations. I've ever been in, uh, but, um, uh, he, uh, finishes, or about half finishes the tea and he sets the mug down and he gets up. You want to go for a walk? You okay? Uh, she checks the time. Uh, it is about mm, 10 o'clock at night. Okay. Um, you can tell from the sounds outside that they are starting to shut the midway down. Uh, you anticipate your sisters being back at the RV here within an hour. Um, okay. But as far as going into the carnival, not so much. Okay. Uh, but she'll shoot her sister's uh, text, like, going for a walk. Uh, see you later. Uh, and she uh, directs Riley in helping her fold up her tent and put her stuff away. She does not let him into the RV, uh, but she uh, just... Uh, do you remember how to put that board away? Like, put it in the, the box and uh, just that stuff. And and he he uh, actually, uh, some of the things he does almost instinctively as far as, uh, you know, making sure to put the cloth over your crystals. Uh, he's, you know, he, he used to kind of help run some schemes with you back in the day so he's he's used to yeah he, he knows when it's his time to shut up and help and he actually goes about uh doing the uh doing the job without being too much of a pain in the ass but uh you do eventually pack the tent up and uh he does offer you his arm and it's he doesn't. He does, He seems like he's not expecting you to take it, but he's just doing the no. gentlemanly thing. <laughs> she she sort of like pats his elbow and tucks it back into his side. And he and <laughs> like I the packing up of the tent makes me nostalgic, but not quite that nostalgic. How's your boss treating you? He's keeping me busy. And Riley starts to lead you off towards um, the parking lot where you can see there's a line of cars waiting to get out of the one exit from the fairgrounds. Yeah, there's always one. And there's like sheep in front of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he, he just seems to be wandering about aimlessly. Uh, he's he's keeping me busy, keeping me employed, keeping me fed. Uh, you know, this is kind of how I like it. I don't think if he ever did offer, I don't think I would actually take him up on it. I kind of like being what I am. And okay. it's, uh, I, I mean, I, I get to see and do things that humans don't get to and I don't have the uh, we'll say the drawbacks that the rest of the licks have. So, I'm 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 happy being on the uh, being on the edge of the knife, as it were. Now, like I hate to ask, but 
Ipswich. How big of a mess did y'all make? Why were you following us? Did your boss tell you to? Yes and no. He... He, he, he caught up onto something that happened in Louisiana and sent me to go check in on it. And that's when I ran into your trail. Mm. Well, all of it's family business. And I, having not received much direction from the family, since Ipswich, don't think I should really talk about it. Fair enough. It's just the reason I ask is just with as pissed off as the tower is back in Jersey and I mean, I know how to read the news and the mess that one of you left behind back in Florida. I'm worried. I mean, we'll have to deal with my sister's proclivities at some point. Uh, but she's been around a while. She's bored. I think. I don't know. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, we don't talk about it much. I just kind of ignore the fingers in the fridge. Um, Literally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Riley does a double take when she mentions body parts in the fridge. Uh, he, he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, he, he doesn't react visibly, but you can tell there's that little that little twitch that he gets in his right eye. Uh, not quite a wince, but it, you you've been around Riley long enough to pick up on all of I his see tells. It. I see it. And in fact, why don't you go ahead and give me a wits and insight roll, please? good roll for me. Oh, what's my hunger? Uh, one. Three successes? You know that Riley doesn't have a benevolent bone in his body. And... You have suspicions about what he's actually doing here. Just as a just as a frame of reference going forward for the rest of the scene. Did you... I'm sorry, you might need to be a little clearer for the player. Oh. Um Riley has ulterior motives talking to you. He's not. Well, this is this isn't a uh, this isn't a social call. Oh hell no! This isn't social at all. All we've done is talk business. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to, you know. Yeah, he's he's looking for information for somebody. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so she's gonna sort of look around to see if there's anyone like. Are there any kind around? No. Or, no? No. Like, what do you actually want to know, Riley? And he just stops. And he looks down at his boots. Look, I know that you all were dealing with something in the family up there. My boss wanted to know 
if there was anything worthwhile that you might have found that he'd be possibly interested in buying. Can Celia think of anything? Uh, you all didn't actively collect any fetters from the White House, per se. Um, you all sure have probably made a few extra ghosts up there. <laughs> but, uh, if, if Riley's, um, if Riley's looking for artifacts or fetters of some kind, mm. you all are empty handed. Yeah. Yeah. If you're fetter fishing, <laughs> We were a little busy to pick anything up from the Milner estate. Um, all right. Is it safe to go poking around up there? I mean, yeah, we, we shoved the vampire wraith as far up its own asshole as we could. Those things actually exist? Yes. I mean, you all are dead already. I didn't know it worked that way. It does. Death. Death is only the beginning. <sighs> okay. Now. There's also. <sighs> like, I'm picking up some extra side work. The Anarchs are asking about you, too. Well, that makes a little more sense than the cam, but what... What is it? Whatever whatever happened between the cam and the Anarchs in Jersey is between the cam and the Anarchs in Jersey, but money talks, bullshit walks, I need to put gas in the bike. And I'm going to be honest and upfront with you. They're looking to get some background information on you and your sisters. And I'm just doing what I need to do so I can go back and be honest with them. And... I'm not going to be asking you any more questions about what's going on. I just. Well, I mean, be careful. Honest, obviously. But. Uh, mm. Mm. Do you have any specific questions that I can answer? They mostly wanted to know how old you all were. I hardly see how that's relevant. And it's a rude thing to ask a lady. <laughs> he actually chuckles a little bit at that. Uh, yeah, no, nah, it's... I get the impression that they're babes in the woods and they don't know how big and bad you all are and they wanted oh. to know... Well, uh, I don't have exact ages on my sisters, but you can tell them that at least one of us is pre-family reunion. Okay. All right, that's, uh, that's all I needed to know. Mm -hmm. the, the info that I've already got from just following your back trail was... And from knowing me? Come on, Riley. You can't think that I'm not offended. I know you are. But I'm trying to be at least a little upfront and honest with you for the first time in my life. Because I, I can only begin to think of what kind of mess you all are in and I mean, it scares the shit out of me and you know maybe there is that little small piece that still gives a shit about our past and I'm, I'm just concerned 
Well, we did our jobs as we were directed by the family quite well, really. Uh, we have a new recipe for Putinesca sauce. Um, and, you know, just maybe it makes sense that some of the younger kids at the table would get in trouble. But if that happens, it happens. Um, honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do next anyway with Lars Chabot gone. So I'll see what happens. Uh, I don't think you all are going to need that spooky son of a bitch, but if there's any way that you can get him back, I would highly advise doing it. I don't think I'll be able to tackle where he is for at least a century. That juju where he got sucked into the Shadowlands where all that shit went down. Um, so I'm I'm not crossing over there on my own for a long time. Um, oh God, I guess I have to find someone else to teach me if he's gone. But I can um, help you out with that. I know people. You, you know someone, you know another Smetty. Not a, not a Smetty per se, but there's others. Look, we'll... Look, I'm not ready to talk about it anyway. Okay. I'm, I'm hoping... really good. I'm hoping he pulls his own ass out of the fire, because I can't do it for him. I don't know where any of his other child are. I have no way of contacting them. I'm I'm hoping that there's a reason he's been around this long and he can deal with it himself. I'm sure he's resourceful enough that you shouldn't have to worry too much, but, but if you do need anything, just give me a call. Fuck you. Why would you care? Go ahead and give me another wits and insight roll. Four successes? You are picking up on more of his nervous ticks and it almost looks like he might be going through some sort of a withdrawal I thought you said your dometer was treating you okay have you not seen them in a while I've been following you all and look I'm not asking for a fix but if you know of anyone who'd be offering any around here I'm not, I would not ask you directly. I'm just, if Ugh. you know someone who's... It's been over a month, and... The... The, well, Anar uh, the Anarchs in Jersey took care of me for a little while, but it's... Running out. I'll help you out. I don't know... I don't think my sisters would be happy to know that you've been following us, and I'd rather not see your head in our freezer. So, uh, cause you know, you'd be looking at me all the time and I don't like that. <laughs> uh, so I'll help you out. As long as you're trailing us, just, I don't know, be discreet. Okay. Uh, you won't even know I'm there, but if you- Of course I'll know you're there. You're gonna have, you're, come on. Right, right. And he, uh, he's been kind of meandering towards his bike. And you can, you can see the, 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 the fire engine red with the candy finish gas tank. Uh, so glowy. The, the obscenely chromed out rims, the short pipes. Yeah, the, the Riley's bike is not discreet by any stretch oh. of the imagination. Oh God, I'm. Uh, she looks at him and is like, I'm surprised we didn't hear that thing. 
you've been following us from Pensacola? How the hell didn't we hear you? I, I've been staying a day or two behind. We've been that easy to follow? Oh, God. Just gotta follow the bodies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think she I think she wants to get found. I'm not sure why. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Just letting you know the scuttle button jerseys also picking up on that as well. But yeah. I'm gonna if you can just make an arrangement for me somewhere later on down the road that I can get taken care of and be appreciated. Uh, I do have one last thing for you, and then I'm gone out of your life. Okay. And uh, he reaches into the, the saddlebags of his uh, on his bike, and he pulls out uh, an envelope. And it's you can tell it's been it's been riding around in that bag for a while. Uh, but he hands it over to you, and inside the envelope is a uh, there are a couple of photographs with a name written on the back. Uh, the photographs are of a uh, a young. Uh, You'd probably guess Bruja going off of the uh, the costume that she's wearing. A lot of leather. A lot of leather, fangs out, the whole nine yards. Look, this is the gal who wanted me to get the information that I needed to get. Uh, not familiar to me. No. But then again, I, I was hanging out with the cam when I was in Jersey. Uh, who is she to the Anarchs? She's, she thinks she's a baron. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, like, it, it, it's, it's She's hard. adorable. I mean, look at those cheeks. <laughs> like, it, it, it's, it, it's hard to laugh somebody off when they've got three or four guns pointed at you. But well, I mean, when you can die, yeah. And he, he's he's silent for a very uncomfortable moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, look. Her name. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna love this. Her name's Molotov. Oh. Mm-hmm. What? Well, um... Ah, uh, that's yeah the exact reaction that I had to. Uh, I'm not laughing. Not at all. You know, they they let anybody pick out their nicknames now and it's just stupid. They don't have a vetting system or anything? Yeah, but... I mean, then again, you're one to talk Wiley Riley. Come the fuck on. <laughs> and he... He... You you see the the uncomfortable strain that he's been under having this whole conversation just kind of crack a little bit, and he's got an actual genuine smile on his face. Yeah, that was that was stupid. Yeah, uh, yeah. Glad you know that now. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, look, I'm gonna leave you be. When you get to Jersey, just keep an eye out. All right. Do you need your fix now, or are you good for a little I'm, bit? I'm, I don't know how it works. I'm I'm fine for now, but like if you could even leave one staked for me somewhere later on down the road, just I'm not killing someone for you. How much? But like, well, how you much wouldn't you kill them. I'd do it. Ugh. And uh, she looks kind of disgusted with herself, but she moves closer to him and uh, sort of moves in like she's going to kiss him and she bites her lip enough to draw blood. And uh, she kisses him with the intent, not so much to kiss him, but it's a 
it's a nice it's a nice cover. Yeah. And you can you can tell he's more interested in the Vitae than the physical contact. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's very good. And he <sighs> Thanks. Okay. I'm not killing anyone for you. I'm not leaving someone to die for you. Deal with it. Will do. I'll leave, I'll see you around, all right? Apparently you're going to have to. At least till Jersey. Well, thanks for, I guess, being decent for you. I'll take that as a compliment. And then he gets on his bike. You're welcome. He kicks the bike on. And it is, yeah, you are now honestly shocked that you have never heard his bike at any point in time on your trip. Because, I mean, it's, it's obnoxious as hell. Those 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 uh, those exhaust pipes are way too short for any state law. <laughs> I mean, I are... should have still heard it like two days behind us. What the <laughs> hell? But when when you're uh, when you're a ghoul for a Ravnos, you've got your own little tricks up your sleeve. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, she's she wishes that it had been another few years before she saw him, but she she's annoyed that his dometer isn't taking better care of him. That they didn't set up like someone along the way mm -hmm. for him to stop in and see. That's worrisome. She's not interested in having her ex-fiance attached to her. There's a reason that didn't work. <laughs> um, but she also doesn't want him to go out like a ghoul that hasn't fed in a while. That just sounds unpleasant. And we'll maybe use this as some uh, some re some possible points of redemption later on down the road in season 2 and we'll see uh we'll see what comes of Riley <laughs> but uh Riley rides off into the night and you eventually rejoin your sisters to continue the trek back to Jersey mm -hmm. and that is where we will end your epilogue with the bad penny riding off into the not moon set moon whatever <laughs> but uh this was this was fun getting to uh, getting to pull celia back into the mix and uh start to lay the groundwork for season two which will eventually be happening uh wanted to wanted to revisit everybody and kind of keep everyone on their toes so to speak mm -hmm. um anyways uh rosie it's been a blast having you on again why don't you go ahead and uh do your thing here and then we'll move on to the uh the next installment yeah um hi i'm rosie regular size mom you can find me on twitter at mom underscore size you can also find me on twitter instagram and tiktok as at odd duck dice because I make pretty dice. Um, you know, if, if you like looking at dice, which you probably do if you're watching this. Um, so yeah, you can find me every Thursday and Sunday over on Vorpal Tales. And Vorpal Tales has just started. They've, they've changed up their Patreon levels a little bit. And now we're offering uh, like private Patreon shows. Ooh. So, uh, I'm in a couple of those. I'm not going to tell you which ones right now, because uh, you can subscribe and see how, what what I'm in. But the casts are all fantastic. My husband, uh, Ben Big Dad, is in a couple. He also does some stuff on, over on Warpal. Uh, if you like Vampire, you can check out his all set game over on Big Dad Industries. It's been it's been awesome. <laughs> Uh, and you can also check out a a kind of experimental Bluebeard's Bride that I've been running over on Gehenna. Uh, Gehenna Gaming, it's, it's interesting. I'm calling it heritage horror. So if you like feminine horror, check it out. And I think that's 
all I know of for the moment. Um, I hope you have a, I hope the rest of the episode is fantastic and you have a good night. Hopefully everyone will. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take an intermission here and we will uh, move on to the last half here in about five minutes. See y'all then. And now it's Zoe's turn. <laughs> Hello, Zoe. Hi. Uh, who, are, who are you playing tonight, Zoe? <laughs> I'm playing Nyx, the Nagaraha Flesh Eater. Um... Who I really can't say has never done anything wrong anymore. That ship sailed some time ago. <laughs> I mean, if you want to get technical, that ship sailed well before uh, the the series started. Yeah, but now the secret's out. Right. <laughs> All right. So um, we'll pick you up here after the RV has reached Newark. Uh, it's been about a roughly a week, week and a half since uh, the incident at Ipswich. And the only point of reference that the, the Coterie has to work with is that you've got work to do in Newark. Uh, you, there were promises made to Keeper Charlson that uh, the Psycho Pomps were going to help clear out the Tremere Chantry of spooks and specters and whatnot. Um, there has been no word, of course, about Lar Chavot. And you can tell that the this is weighing on uh, Celia quite a bit. Sure. But... Um, the RV pulls up in front of a motel in kind of one of the more industrial sections of Newark. Uh, something low key that you all can just use as a general beachhead while you're trying to get things organized with the local Camarilla as far as what needs to be done and when. Now, you're gonna uh, you're gonna be starting at hunger one, but uh, why don't you go ahead and give me a rouse check just for shiggles? Yeah, that is a pass. Okay. Now, Cherubina and Celia have all split off to kind of do their own thing. Uh, you know that Cherubina has been in somewhat frequent communication with her grandmother back in Italy. <laughs> and for whatever reason, Celia's always been kind of keeping an eye on your back trail ever since uh, you left Ipswich. Now, you've kind of taken it upon yourself to uh, kind of scout the local area. You know that this is more than likely firm Anarch territory just because of the surroundings. It's, you know, tropes exist for a reason. And... The circumstances uh, that you all left Newark in, things could be a little dicey with them. It all just kind of depends on which anarch you talk to. So I want you to go ahead as uh, as you're kind of scouting the area. Uh, I want you to go ahead and give me a. Give me an intelligence and streetwise, please. Sure. See, I have two in intelligence and one in streetwise. So what could possibly go wrong? Ah, we'll see what happens. Uh, if I remember correctly, last time we were here, everything that went down with the Putinescas, we uh, kind of fucked up what they had going on with the Anarchs, mm -hmm. with the big drug operation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a ghoul. Uh, hey. 
Wow. Okay, that's three successes. Not bad. It's seven, eight, and a nine. <laughs> very, very good. So, as you are kind of poking around through some of the the more, uh, we'll say, rundown areas, um, you start off in the you know the drive around vehicle that you all tow behind the RV. The, the minivan and that's when you pull by uh, an old somewhat abandoned uh, strip mall uh, you see there's you know uh, the, the mandatory nail salon that seems to be always present in a strip mall mm -hmm. um couple of a uh, couple of empty storefronts and there's uh, a head shop and then that's basically it there's two operational stores and then there's five total of you know totally uh, abandoned places of course the nail salon's always going to do business and the head shop also will always be doing business uh you pull back in behind the service area for the strip mall where all the dumpsters and, uh, you know, the, the big deliveries would go. And that's when you see someone familiar putting the boots to somebody. It's Sheriff O'Malley standing over... Uh, a broken, beaten figure. You can't really tell who they are right now. But Sheriff O'Malley is actually lighting that ever-present dangling cigarette from his lips. And you can't really hear what he's saying, but you can tell he's shouting something at them. And then that's when he proceeds to start stomping on their head. It's quick work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and after he's done, the body disintegrates into ash. And Sheriff O'Malley looks up and he makes eye contact with you. And Nick's uh, just very calmly, like probably inside, she's a little anxious. But on the outside, she tries to, like, maintain her composure and just gives a small wave at him. <laughs> uh, Sheriff O'Malley takes one last drag of his cigarette and he flicks it into the ash pile that he's created. And he gestures for you to get out of the vehicle. Yeah, Nyx will. Uh, is there some kind? Um, I don't have anything in politics. Never mind. Nyx will get out of the car. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to bother. If I have nothing in politics, I don't think Nyx is going to think twice about it. No. <laughs> so you walk up to Sheriff O'Malley. Long time and... no see. Ah, oh, indeed. Uh,. Didn't think you'd all be back here so quickly. Well, we had have business to take care of here. Uh, remind me real quick. Uh, was there anything? Was there anything about the promises to Keeper Charleston we made that were implied? They didn't want uh, Sheriff O'Malley to know about. Uh, Honestly, like I can't Malley. honestly I can't remember, so we'll just say okay. no. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> uh, being asked to keep something a secret, I think Nix would to ensure their further employment. Uh, but she'll just say, uh, "We had, you know, promises about the we promised Keeper Charleston we would help with his chantry." Uh, so of course, once we finished what we had to do first, of course, we made our way back here. Promise is a promise, after all. Uh, indeed. Uh... And actually, it's kind of fortuitous that we've uh, run into each other right now. I've uh, oh. I've got some information for you, and tell you what, why don't uh, why don't you give me a ride downtown? 
since you're here and I don't want to have to bother with an Uber. Sure. I'd be happy to. Uh, information about... Mm, we'll, we'll say the local climate. Okay. And... Sure. Uh, Nix will get in. Uh, she will get in. Uh, she will get in her car and like unlock it for the sheriff. I don't think she thinks like open it for him or anything. <laughs> and uh, Sheriff O'Malley uh, slides into the passenger seat and you can see he's messing around in his phone for a moment. All right, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, you can just take me uh, take me back to Elysium. You remember the place, don't you? Of course. How can I forget? <laughs> um, you don't necessarily know the f you know we'll say the quickest route to get there. So you have to you know you have to screw around on your phone getting getting the you know the route all taken care of. Um, but you eventually do get everything kind of charted and you start your drive. Uh, Sheriff O'Malley, you know, he's getting comfortable and he actually starts messing around with the radio and he turns it to, um, you know, an easy listening station, something nice and mellow and calm. Uh, now, uh, it. She's not going to change it, but <laughs> Nix hates it so much. <laughs> now, uh, the the business with uh, you and your sisters mm -hmm. uh, up north there. I I mean I've there there's talk that's even reached down here about uh, what's going on, and you know I I, I have to say that. When two Hakata are fighting each other, that makes my life a hell of a lot easier. So thank you for uh, whatever you were doing up there. It's appreciated. Well, I'm glad we could make things easier for you uh, once again. And yeah, now if you had only just taken out the rest of the Putineska when you all left, that would have made my life even better, but... Well, the Putineska are family. We removed the bad apple, I guess you could say, so that he wouldn't spoil the bunch, actually. And Nick's, um, God, what did we do? We did something terrible to that poor guy. You exsanguinated <laughs> him and turned yeah. his, uh, his Vitae <laughs> into Putineska sauce. <laughs> right, right, sure. Nick's, re Nick's like, reaches her hand back and pulls out a bottle. <laughs> It says we we did quite a thorough job uh, removing him from the situation. <laughs> <laughs> he opens the cap and he ah, clever, clever. Mm -hmm. Mind if I keep this? Sure, we have plenty. He actually takes a swig. <laughs> sure. Oh, he seals it back up. Well, it'll it'll come in handy if I ever need it in case of emergency, as long as it keeps. But. All right. I could have easily just taken the Uber back to Elysium, but I wanted to talk with you in particular. And uh, it's, yeah, just the uh, the good luck keeps on rolling, I guess. Oh. Uh, look, we try very, very hard to maintain a good working relationship with local law enforcement. And... Mm -hmm. Let's just say that something suspicious kind of popped off around the time that y'all were here in town, and I just had some questions. There's a... There's a body found at, uh, at a Walmart. You didn't have anything to do with that, did you? A whole body was found at Walmart? That's probably not me, no. Mm, <laughs> give me a wits and insight check. Uh-huh. If I remember correctly, she only left like a hand behind, right? Oh, yo, yes, yes. But well, but there was more than enough blood. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he can still refer to it as a body, but yeah. Nyx is going to be the way Nyx is. Uh, six is a success. Okay. Yep. One, two, three. Three successes. 
You're pretty sure that Sheriff O'Malley already has your number, so to speak. And uh-huh. he's he's just being polite about it. <laughs> so you didn't have anything to do with that hand they found. Well, you said a body, not not just a hand. Uh, that was. Yeah, uh, if Nix can tell he knows already, she's not going to try to hide it. Uh, it's clear you already know the information you're after, Sheriff. There's not really much point in concealing it from you. You're smart. If only the rest of your clan had the even half your brains, once again, it'd make my life easier. Now... You have to understand that with us being where we're at geographically, it's hard to keep the Second Inquisition from getting involved. I had to expend a great amount of personal effort to, we'll say, make the investigation go away and keep you all out of the mix. And... Rather than haul you before the prince, I figured we could do a little horse trading, as they say. What did you have in mind? Uh, why don't you pull over here? And he points, and you can see that uh, it's... Uh, you're in kind of a, you know, a, a typical blue collar residential area where there's going to be, you know, the corner bar every couple of blocks. Mm-hmm. And he's pointing at the bar. And you can see the sign out front is the blue mill. Why don't you yeah, and I go have a drink? We'll, we'll talk business real quick. Sure. Uh, Nix will pull over where he pointed out. Uh, and she'll also add, um, hmm. no, never mind. Uh, okay. She won't make a comment. She'll just pull over. Okay. So you pull the vehicle over to the side of the, you know, up to the curb. You get out. Cheryl Fomalna gets out and you walk into the bar. Uh, if you bother smelling the air, uh, it, it's it's got that old skunky beer, and even though you know public smoking is you know a no go, there if you've had a place open long enough that has allowed smoking inside, there's always a permanent smell to the place. Oh yeah. Um, and in fact, you know the the more the, we'll say more recent cigarette smoke kind of helps cover up the stank of the old. And that's Mm -hmm. kind of what you're getting. It's almost borderline, uh, you know, mildew, really nasty stuff. Uh, The bar is deserted, save for the bartender. And Sheriff O'Malley goes and he sits down and he pats the stool next to him. Can I make some kind of check because this all feels very I mean obviously things are already a little weird considering the situation but this feels extra weird gotcha uh, like the bar you- I, I guess I guess to try to try to figure out like is there something up with the bar okay actually you know what um, why don't you go ahead and give me a Why don't you give me a resolve and a cult roll? Okay. One, two, three, four. Four successes. Okay. Uh, you have spent spent enough time traveling about that you've come to uh, 
pick up and understand um, a lot of the hidden iconography that the kindred use to communicate with each other. You know, graffiti, uh, you know, random, you know, posters, you know, put up on the sides of buildings. Uh, you see a uh, what it, after, if you look at it from a certain angle, you see that some of the, the tchotchkes behind the bar. Mm, you're pretty sure that this is a, a kindred only establishment. Okay. That is kind of what she was assuming, but it's good to know for sure. Mm -hmm. It feels a lot better. Uh, she'll move to go sit next to the sheriff. Okay. After confirming that. Yeah. And Sheriff O'Malley kind of taps the bar. Hey, Mike, why don't you give us uh, give us a pint? The freshest that you got, please. And the, the bartender is a... Uh, middle-aged, skinny, practically bald man. Uh, he's so skinny you would actually almost go to say malnourished. Uh, but you can tell that he's at least a ghoul. Okay. And Mike goes about his work wordlessly. And he sits two pint glasses up in front of you. He puts a couple of blood bags in the microwave. Sets them, you know, sets them for a timer. Uh, now, uh, as far as the horse trading goes, you and your sisters, you've, uh, you know, you've got a particular set of skills that I, unfortunately, I'm lacking on. Most of the Camarilla is lacking on, to be perfectly honest with you. No. Now, when you all left, the the situation with the Anarchs got a little hairy. I need you to take care of something for me for that. In exchange for not bringing you in for violating the masquerade and having the prince take off your head. Does that sound like a fair deal? In my defense, I feel that not leaving much evidence behind wasn't necessarily a breach of your masquerade, but sure, that sounds like a fair deal. I've got maps of everywhere that you all have been. People talk. And it just so happens that, uh, you know, there. You realize you're in a database, right? What kind of database? The kind that gets kindred killed. Mysterious. Nick, Nick smiles a little bit because <laughs> she's trying to become a no, like not a known serial killer, but like, like, like the the uh, what? Oh my god, what's the guy? I can't think of the name now. <laughs> The, the Zodiac Killer, like the Zodiac Killer, like someone people talk about, but they don't know who he is until like after he's dead. <laughs> uh, so there is like a bit of a smile at that. <laughs> it's like, I'm in a database, really? Yeah, the, I mean, the, the SI, they're, they're everywhere. They keep an eye on certain things. And one more misstep could probably be the end of you three, and I just want to make you aware of that. And if you want my assistance in keeping them off your trail, you'll do something for me. And then that's when the microwave dings. Mike goes and he rips open the blood, or the, rips off the tops of the blood bags, pours them into the, uh, the pint glasses, and he takes his, you know, his metal bartender stir stick and he's getting both of the drinks all mixed up for the two of you mm -hmm. now listen there's an anarch boss that for whatever for various reasons we can't act directly against 
and that's where you and your sisters come in. What's his name? Uh, her name. Her name. Is, Sorry. Uh, she goes by Molotov. And you remember Celia mentioning the name in passing. But you there really wasn't too much to it. But now things are kind of starting to piece together what might be going on. But uh, he reaches into the uh, the front coat or the, the front of his suit coat and he pulls out a uh, a picture. And I mean it's the woman that you see, it she screams stereotypical Bruja Anarch. This here is a problem. With everything going on with Panhard over in New York, things get dicey for us. And the last thing we need is a full-on Anarch uprising. The Camarillas, it would be it would be foolhardy for me to send anyone after her because even if they were successful, they'd be able to trace it back to us, and I can't have that. Sure. So you want us to, you know, and she like mimics a steak going to her. Uh, if you feel the need to, by all means. Quite frankly. I'd be willing to overlook another breach of the traditions if you were to just take her out. You don't have to bring her in. Just make her gone. Okay. Do you know where she hangs out? Where her base of operations, so to speak, is? Well, she is mobile. She moves around. We've got a few of her safe houses already tagged. Mm -hmm. But... There's a good chance that they know that we know. You know how that game is. No, I, I understand. And So you think it's possible she may be trying to go to ground if people are after her? That's indeed the case. Uh, Nyx holds up her bone bracelet, where I don't know if you remember, uh, but I remember that I have Trevor, a former Anarch ghoul, bound in her bracelet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so she's going to try to, uh, I don't know what the mechanics are, but I can just do it. Just like summon him out to ask him some questions. Uh, tell you what, this what? is a kindred bar so it's mm -hmm. probably okay yeah um and you don't uh, as far as the iconography goes you don't see anything that would be designating this in elysium so you're right. you're free to do what you want to do um yeah. why don't you go ahead and give me a rouse check sure that is a 10 a success Okay. Uh, however, this is a Oblivion power that you're going to be using. And what happens when you roll a 10 on Rouses for Oblivion? You get yourself a stain, which I should have given you a few uh, already, but I have. Oh, I have, I have a stain. I have one stain. Okay. So now I have two stains. Now you have two stains, yes. <laughs> um, and go ahead and give me a... You can go ahead and give me a intelligence and oblivion roll, please. Do I want to blood surge? Nah, I'm feeling lucky. Okay. Uh, ooh. Uh, it's one success. <laughs> With this being a kindred establishment, I mean, the veil's a little thin here anyway, so you can... I'll let you squeak by on the one. Okay. But you... 
caress the bracelet and you don't so much see as you feel Trevor kind of taking his place, sitting on the bar top in between you and Sheriff O'Malley. You can see the ghost. You're not sure if Sheriff O'Malley can. Uh, Nix will say, Sheriff, uh, just excuse me for one moment. Trevor? Do you know anything about someone, a bruja named Molotov? You see him sort of just... <sighs> I'm gonna take that as a yes. Would you happen to know where she would go if she felt that her own life was in danger? You only got one success. He's only he's only able to communicate non-verbally. <laughs> uh, no, that's fair. <laughs> so it's possible you might have some idea, but you're not sure. And you you feel him kind of <clears throat> tense up a little bit, and he reaches out and he grabs the the mug of Vite in front of Sheriff O'Malley and he starts tapping it on the bar top. It's got a rhythm to it. Is it Morse code? It is Morse code. Ooh, do I know Morse code? <laughs> uh, give me a intelligence and academics. That's three dice. I probably don't know Morse code. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do a, a blood surge to okay. try to add two dice. Uh, that is a success, so I don't get hungrier. Um, so that is two dice plus two for intelligence and use of the academics. Yep. All right, so it'll give me five. Uh, that's one success. You, your, your Morris is a little rusty, but mm -hmm. you, you kind of pick up. It sounds like he's trying to tap out an address and he's going too quickly for you to like pick up on it. Sheriff O'Malley kind of Are you doing this last? It's okay. Uh I'm not. My my uh Well, I'm not really sure what you would call him. Uh the ghost that I picked up from my last time here is helping me out. Uh, how's your Morse code, Sheriff? Well, now that I know that it's Morse, I got this. Tell him to slow down. Yeah. Uh, hey, Trevor, slow down a little bit. And he's... Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Sheriff O'Malley grabs a napkin off the bar and a pen, and he's... Oh, it's an address. Oh, perfect. And he takes one look at it and he puts it face down and he slides it across the bar to you through Trevor. Sheriff O'Malley doesn't seem to feel yeah. whatever, you know, he just nonchalantly like poop. And you see Trevor actually like the his spiritual form actually kind of wavers in and out. Ooh. Like, oh, don't don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's all right. You can't. I don't think you can see him. Uh, I don't think we really need him anymore. We have address. Thank you so much, Trevor. You're such a big help. I'm so glad I picked you up. He flips you off. <laughs> uh, she puts him back in the bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> comes back in the bracelet. <laughs> oh. So just, right, uh... If, if if you can start your search whenever it's convenient, I understand that you've got work to do here in town. If you can squeeze this in, at least I would highly advise you find the time sooner yes. sooner rather than later, all right? Uh, we will most certainly find the time as a, a thank you, Sheriff. You can count on it. Uh, yeah, you've got manners, and I appreciate that, too. You know, I, I had a great time with the three of you the last time you were around in this. I could... If the rest of your clan was like you, I would have a much higher opinion of you lot, but... 
Y'all, y'all you know, having. I'm sorry. I said y'all, y'all could teach your cousins a thing or two about a thing or two. I've always found that having good manners tends to help me in my, uh, well, you know, having good manners, one thing leads to another, and before you know it, you're leaving a hand behind. Aha. And the two of you finish your Vitae beers. You load back up into the RV. You take Sheriff O'Malley to Elysium. And you decide to head back to check in with your sisters. And that is where we will end Nix's epilogue. Dang. We had a nice, had a fun little time here. Um, uh, we've got one last little bit featuring Larchevo. So everyone be sure to stick after the, the, the thingy here. There will be a transition. We're not done. We're not going anywhere. We got one more. But uh, we'll say goodbye to Zoe for now. Uh, Zoe, tell us uh, where you can be found, what you got going on, etc. and so forth. Yeah, yeah. My name's Zoe. It's been so much fun to play Nyx again, even for this short bit. I can't wait to play her more. She is such a delight. Uh, uh, pretty much the only time I get to play someone who's just uh, un- unembarrassedly just a kind of a bad person, but that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, you can find me at Twilik43 on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all the social medias. Uh, you can find me pretty often over on Carrying Comfort Studios in the Discord and on stream. We have a bunch of new programming that just happened uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, you'll be able to find me on Sundays for a bit at 3 p.m. for Carrying Comfort News, uh, which at the time of this recording will be having our first show soon uh but by the time this is released uh it'll probably be the second or third um you'll be able to find me on there for a bit i'm not sure how long i'll be a host uh but we'll see it'll be fun and wednesdays uh we have good game well played uh which i'll be on pretty frequently um and then uh that is all for current streams there's some stuff in the works um so just keep an eye out for that. It's going to be cool and exciting. Yes, I, I know Wes is a very, very busy cat. So Wes that'll... is very busy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I look oh, forward. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh... Uh, well, I'll, I'll plug one thing. It's not a current stream. It just wrapped up, but now the whole thing is on YouTube. If you go to youtube.com slash Carrying Comfort Studios, you can find the four-part actual play of Riley Rethel's The Riot Starts, which is a Hades town based TTRPG about communist uh, uprising in the capitalist underworld. Uh, it was really, really good. There were a lot of emotions. I highly recommend you check it out. I was very proud of that. It was a GM-less game. I facilitated and played it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We all had a lot of fun. I'm very proud of that game. It's good stuff. It's very, very good stuff. So <laughs> stick around. We got Joe as Lar Chaveau coming up. Oh, it rhymes. I just now caught up. Oh, yeah. Anyways, hang tight. And now it's time for our final epilogue. Even Lar Chaveau's getting into the mix here. Because uh, we, we left him on uh, a little bit of a cliffhanger and it's time to see just what exactly happened uh before we dive in uh this is of course dj toreador joe go ahead and say hi joe hi joe um hey everybody it's me joe better known as dj toreador no Fanger on twitter i am so glad to be back for larchevo after having his fun and sending people to the shadow realm i need to stop saying that because that's like Yu-Gi-Oh related um the shadow lands <laughs> there it is the shadow lands so some section no, the the section of the umbra where the dead people live <laughs> yes not tartarus no 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 <laughs> so where we last left larsha though he did what he needed to do to make sure that the pesky specter was no longer going to be an issue. And to do so, he had to, we'll say, sacrifice a few decades of hard work gathering fetters, binding spirits, and 
after he uh, unloaded the magazine, so to speak, the specter, uh, upon being uh, forcibly sent back to the Shadowlands, managed to get a hold of Larchavo, bring him along for the ride. Now, for those of you out there not all too familiar with the Wraiths and the Shadowlands, the ghosts who do not pass on end up in a even darker, more run-down version of the modern world of darkness. Remnants of old buildings are superimposed upon the uh, the newer construction. If people still remember how old buildings looked, and enough people still remember, that building is still represented. The first thing that Lara Chavo sees upon regaining his senses is the fact that he is in the swamp, in the wetlands that were surrounding the Milliner Lighthouse. He is unfortunately knee deep in the bog. Now, the thing about this particular section of the Shadowlands is this is firmly held under milliner control. The Hakata, by and large, have a hard time dealing with the dead in their own domain, so to speak. And any opportunity that a rogue wraith or a specter will have to take their own measure of revenge upon a kindred, they're going to do everything within their power to do so. Larshavo is feeling pawed at by something underneath the water. It starts as fingers probing and touching his feet. And then he feels a firm grip on his left ankle. However, Larchevo, you have your own tricks up your sleeve to deal with this. You reach into your pocket and you have an old piece of wrought iron chain. It's just one solid link. This was a gift given to you by one of the first Loa you spoke to after your embrace. This chain is made from Stygian steel. Meaning it was originally crafted using the essence of a wraith. And the law told you to never use it unless you were in the most dire of circumstances. You're separated from the coterie that you were assisting. No discernible way out of the wetlands, out of the bog, for now. Might not be a bad idea to flex on the ghosts a little bit. You want to go ahead and do that? I'd be glad to. Go ahead and, uh, let's see here. We're going to say this is going to be a wits and a cult roll for you. Uh, 
that's going to equate to seven dice. And uh, we've worked things out to where he, uh, Larshavo, is at hunger zero right now. Mm -hmm. Can I rouse? Um, or just this? Just this. Just this. Okay. Oh, critical. That's two tens. Ten. Remember, for four, five, six. I have two zeros, an eight, and a six. Nice. Other two, four, four. That Lua is speaking to you in your mind right now. As you hold the chain out and you plunge it down into the murky slop at your feet. Mm -hmm. Now this my friend will be a punishment worse than their first death. You will know when to use this. Just make sure that when you do use it, you flee as far and as fast as possible. And the chain link is about the size of a fist. You feel it grow hot to the touch. This, mm -hmm. this sort of heat is very unnatural in the Shadowlands. But the chain breaks in your hand. And you hear the wails and screams of those wraiths that were originally bound to make this link as they are sent to oblivion to no longer exist. It is the supernatural equivalent of using a hand grenade. And you feel a shock wave emanate from your body. And then the pawing at your legs stop. But you know that there is now something out there. You you don't you don't flippantly send wraiths to their final destination, especially Correct. in their land. Correct. Now, Larchavo, the lighthouse you see is almost identical from its uh, real-world reflection. It looks a lot more run down. You see where old stone masonry work makes up the foundation versus the brick that was uh, used in the modern construction. There isn't so much a boardwalk here as there are bodies floating on the surface of the bog to get you out of here. Um, you do feel Catherine out there. You you made sure that you had an anchor of your own, just in case. Yes. Now, Catherine is not at the lighthouse. You sense that she's further back in towards the mainland, so to speak. The knots, or the, the, the threads of fate uh, that you originally saw on the other side of the veil 
are just as strong and vibrant here as they were in the Skinlands. Okay. You do get the sense that the lighthouse could hold something of import. Mm-hmm. But you know not to dilly-dally. Something is coming for you. And it's a race against the clock. How are you going to proceed? You said Catherine is located more towards the mainland. Mm -hmm. Would it be fair to suggest I'm kind of like literally in the middle? Okay, what do you propose? Like I'm trying to see like I know this is the Shadowlands, but geographically, where is he? Because, like, he's in this area. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, if I reach out, if I run this way, will I hit the mainlands? Or if it's just, if it's not, I'll just go to the lighthouse. Uh, you, you can, uh, you can actually see um, something resembling uh, a watchtower off in the distance where the town of Ipswich would be in the mortal realm. Mm -hmm. uh, you could... Um, we'll say you could either comfortably uh, stroll over to the lighthouse and then hope to God you make it back someplace else or forget the lighthouse entirely and make it back to town relatively safely. If you wanted to split the difference and try, try going to the lighthouse and then going to town, I'm going to have to make some rolls. But uh, that's totally your prerogative. You said I feel that there. I feel there's something at the lighthouse. Yes, there's something at the lighthouse. But you know that Catherine is over by where that watchtower is. Back at town. Curiosity. What kind of sense am I getting from the? The lighthouse. There is an object there that has a strong sense of memory that you you can almost taste it that it's closely linked to the milliner family. Hmm. You know, my child would really love a gift. Let's go to the lighthouse. Okay. So you trudge out of the bog. You you have to step on a few of the bodies to do so. But you, That's fine. Your, your, your feet do eventually reach semi-solid ground. Can I... One of the... They're just bodies? Yeah. Do they have pockets? Uh... Yeah, mm, yeah. if you want to go ahead and search... Uh, or, can, I, yeah. can I round through it? Just a couple. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Go ahead and roll... Let's roll f four dice. Okay. Whoa. Well, um, one, two, three. Okay. I Here. got three nines and a five. <laughs> that that's that, that still works though. It's gonna it's gonna run out, but okay. <laughs> that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the bodies floating in the water, some are nude, some are wearing uh, various clothings dating back all the way to the col colonial era, all the way up to modern times. Mm -hmm. uh, you find <sighs> let's make this fun. You find a gun. This is a relic weapon. 
Uh, it is a. Uh, let's uh, let's make this a. Uh, this is a revolver with six bullets in it. Mm -hmm. Someone really loved this gun back when they were alive, and when they were dumped here, the gun was on them. You take the gun. It's seen better days, obviously, but of you, you know that it would it it'll still fire if you need it. Okay, I'll pocket that with me. Did I find anything else from anybody else? Nope. All right. Uh, a relic gun is something of a rarity in the Shadowlands. So you, yeah, yeah, you've got. Uh, you, I've got you, the mother of all prizes here mm -hmm. from that. So let's keep it going. Okay. So you make your way to the lighthouse. The the work that the coterie did also translates over into the skin or into the Shadowlands variant mm -hmm. of the lighthouse. Uh, I believe it was Nyx had used Aura of Decay and did a number on the building. Mm -hmm. And you can see where uh, where the aura had eaten into the building, it's actually bleeding. Mm. Uh, wow, well, look at that. Uh, are you going to go in? Yes. So the kind of the, uh, the kitchen slash dining area of the lighthouse is bare. The cupboards are open. Um, instead of a refrigerator, it, it, there's an old uh, ice box for the 1940s. Anything in it? Nope. It's uh, well, okay. unless you want to count the hunk of rotting meat in no. there. No. <laughs> you thankfully can't uh, smell anything smell. here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But just the the sight alone, if uh, someone had a a weaker stomach, it might have might have done some stuff to them but you you're this is almost your second home yeah uh you proceed to rummage through the lighthouse and you don't find what you're looking for but that sense of connection to whatever is in here gets stronger as you uh get towards the chamber where the ritual itself took place. Mm -hmm. You cross into the ritual chamber and there is a tear in the center, in the in the, uh, just think of it like a, a, a rip in reality mm -hmm. to where you can see I love this faint shimmerings of the skin lands and all of those threads of fate are bound to this this rip in the veil so to speak mm -hmm. And further back in the chamber, resting on resting atop uh, a plinth, is a scrap of aluminum with rivets in it. And why don't you go ahead and give me roll five dice? Three. This piece of aluminum looks like it might be the scrap off of an airplane or off of an airplane. Mm. 
I can't really tell the maker model. You just, uh, the way it's shaped, it looks like it might be a part of a wing. How big is it? Um, it's about two foot long, a foot tall. It's thin. This would, okay. this would be, yeah, it, it's basically the outer sheeting of an airplane wing. Is it pocketable? You can carry it with you. Um, it's not something you're going to be able to put in your pocket, though. Okay. Anything else? Uh, <gasps> not in the room. <laughs> okay. Not right now, anyway. Can I take some of the rivets? Mm. Or are they bolted on? The, 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 well, the rivets are punched into the, the metal. Okay. Um, th this isn't something that you're going to be able to deconstruct, and if you were to do so, it might destroy whatever this is. Okay. Uh, you, okay. Want, you want to take any closer examinations of it, or are you going to take it? Yes. Yes, I would like to take closer examination. Okay. See if there's any... Now, since you're Sometimes. since you're in this uh, in, since you're in the Shadowlands, a lot of your gifts work naturally here. Okay. And you walk up to the piece of uh, aircraft wing, and you trace your fingers along it. You get the flashing in your mind of a young, charismatic man piloting the plane alarms going off in the cockpit the man almost turns his head to look at you and you see the plane quickly approaching what you assume is the ocean through the uh, the front uh windscreen of the cockpit and then the plane impacts you get the sense of cold dark pressure mm -hmm. and then you are back to your senses well hmm Is there a way I can talk to this thing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you place your hand on the section of the wing again. And you can ask it, or the entity inhabiting it, two questions. Okay. Does it have a name? Robert. Okay. <clears throat> Robert. Where is your body located, Cher? Is it in my reach in the vicinity? No. I'm buried on my family's estate. Okay. You are a restless spirit. Do you want a chance at coming back? If just being under my control? I have been here for so long. If you are offering me a chance at change, I will take it. Come with me then. Can I... Do I get to kill milliners? Yes. Signed and sealed. One of the robber. 
and the ghost, the wraith, bound to this section of airplane wing, goes quiet. Mm -hmm. And you feel a sense of not necessarily peace, but sturdy resignation. Okay. Determination. Okay. Now, you are going to have to take the wing with you. That's fine. And so you kind of tuck it up under an arm, I'm assuming? Yeah. Or, 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 or do you have any colorful ways on how you're going <laughs> to... Actually, you said it's about how tall? Uh, it's about a foot long, two foot tall, and it's real thin. Foot long, two foot tall. Mm -hmm. You know what? Could I possibly tuck it in my back of my, in my back on my sh on my shirt yeah. and kind of like put my jacket over it and just keep it like that? Yeah. There we go. That works. Now, are you gonna examine the uh, the rift in the veil at all, or are you going? Yes. To okay. Uh, that will be... Give me eight I can dice. Kill, I can kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Any surging? Nope. Okay. Nope. You you don't have any Vitae here. In, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting this. Larger boat is just here. That's one, two, three... Four, five. Five out of my eight. Everything else is ones. Okay. Damn it. You, you know that this rift will eventually heal. Okay. It cannot be traversed from this side, but someone on the other side if they knew the proper rituals and they had sufficient enough power could use this as a uh, as a one-way door so to speak judging by the uh the strength of the threads here this rift will probably remain open for at least a decade on this, hmm. on this, on the uh, the Skinland side. Okay. Uh, if the lighthouse in the mortal realm didn't have a reputation already, it definitely would have one within a couple of months of being haunted. Being gotcha. Mm -hmm. the, so the wetlands surrounding the lighthouse would. It's just perfect. Mm -hmm. It amplifies it. Mm -hmm. Um, do I see anything inside of it? Uh, all you see is the, uh, uh, the reflection of the other room or the, uh, the, the skin land amalgam or you know mm -hmm. what I mean? the reflection. Yes. Um, you see that the room itself, uh, has almost been blackened to a crisp from or of decay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's it I don't see anything else in there nope there uh, the uh, the coterie is long gone judging from what you see is there any way to like put my hand in there and grab something uh or it's if you want to try it, go ahead. Um, roll me. Would you recommend that? I would not. ST? I would okay. not. <laughs> like I said, it's, not... it's a one-way door. You can try to push the issue, but it's going to come at great cost. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm good. If I can't see anything in there, I'm not going to do anything. I'll continue exploring. Okay. So the, the remainder of the lighthouse... Uh, doesn't really bear much more interest. The 
you know, the rooms don't have a solid architectural theme. You go, you know, if you open a door to look in, you know, what you would assume was the the lighthouse keeper's personal quarters, Mm -hmm. um, it would look like the room was from the 50s. Okay. The kitchen dining area looks like it might be from the 1920s, if not earlier. Okay. So everything everything is a hodgepodge inside the building, much as it would be outside. Do I still get that pull that's in here somewhere? Uh, you the you have the 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 relic the the wing. Gotcha. Yep, you have All that right. on you, and that's what was the uh, that was that was what was drawing your attention here. Then I guess if there's nothing else in here, I'll skid out loud. Okay. So you make your way out of the lighthouse and you kind of take a look out towards the open water. Mm-hmm. The, the, the seas in the Shadowlands are a representation of the Maelstrom you know that you you've never tried crossing the sea uh mostly because you simply just do not have the ability to do so you have to be a wraith to properly navigate the waters and in fact there are wraiths who make their living ferrying ghosts across these waters and throughout uh, other sections of the maelstrom in the Wraithlands. But you see none of the ferrymen that you would assume would be around such a place of power. Mm -hmm. And that's when you start to hear the clinking of chains. Mm Mm-hmm. There is someone walking up the beach. Mm -hmm. And they seem tall and imposing. And in one hand, they are holding a torch, which is burning with a eerie purple and green flame. Mm -hmm. And in their other hand, they're holding a chain made from Stygian steel. You you can tell just by looking at it that it's made from the same stuff from the link that you destroyed to get yourself Mm -hmm. out of the bog. And attached to this chain are wraiths. They're linked up with okay. collars around their necks. And the 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 wraith leading the party turns his head, says something, and his procession stops. That's when he turns his head. And even over this distance, seems to be looking at you right in the eye. Okay. There you are. Hang tight, I'll be with you in a moment. He plants his torch in the sands of the Mm -hmm. beach. Mm -hmm. and starts to wrap the chain around it. Okay. And you can tell that he's going to start turning and walking in your direction here right quick. What else do I see around me? Dead trees, scrabbly yellow grass, there really isn't too much more remarkable remarkable about the location other than the lighthouse, the bog, 
the wastelands between the lighthouse and town, and then the uh, the prisoner procession on the beach itself. Is there a way I can just go to town? You definitely uh, can do so, and I would highly advise doing that. <laughs> I'm going to go to town, then. I'm not going to waste time here. Um, are you um, Are you going to be, uh, we'll say, beating a hasty retreat, or just kind of nonchalantly strolling? Hmm. I'm trying to think, what would Joe do, and what would Larshmo do? Joe, oh not Joe, uh, Largevo would actually hastily saunter. Yes, saunter out. Okay. Like, he's aware it can be kind of dangerous, but he's like, I mean, sure. Mm -hmm. And he'll start going to town. Okay. Several minutes pass. Um, do you take any opportunity to look back behind or are you just marching to town? Marching to town. Okay. I need you to roll five dice. <laughs> well, Messi doesn't count in here. No. Well, no, not Messi, because um, I don't have Vite and I got a zero. Yeah. Uh, crit four, five. You hear Robert's voice. Mm hmm. He says, Behind you. And then you hear the clang of metal on metal. Mm hmm. And you are hit from behind. Okay. And sent sprawling on your face. Okay. You roll over and you look up. And. It's, it's the wraith that was leading the procession on the beach. Okay. And you, of course, didn't see him will his scythe into his hand when he started making his way towards you, but he is now holding a very long and cruel-looking scythe in both hands. Okay. He's standing over the top of you. You don't belong here, but I'm sure your soul will melt down just as well as the others. Now just hold still and this will be over quickly. I had a doubt that. Robert, you want to take a chance and fight a milliner? That's not a milliner. Do you want to get the chance to fight one? Yes. Assist me. I will Please. Do, I will do as you say. And you feel the the wing. It's still tucked into the small of your back. The wing is what took the impact of the scythe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I... <laughs> and Robert's body, as it were, sort of materializes next to you. And you see a large gaping hole in its stomach. Mm -hmm. And mist is just pouring out of this wound. This is the uh, this is the damage his corpus took when the uh, the wing got hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you intend to do now, Larshavo? If Robert can like hold him or like or at least push him back. So I can, I'll be 
into town, just full on sprint. Okay. I'm gonna make a couple of rolls. Okay. Yeah, that's the pool. Yep. So you subconsciously direct Robert to go and try to restrain the uh, the other wraith. Mm-hmm. And you can see them struggling. The Robert isn't necessarily able to do what you would wanted him to. The the other wraith does overpower him. That's fine. But you've got your distraction to either flee or fight. I'm going to flee. You get up and you start to run Mm -hmm. back towards town. And you hear the sound of fighting behind you. Mm Mm-hmm. And then there's silence, but you're still running. Okay. The further you get towards town, the the weaker the wing itself feels, you know, as far as its power is concerned. Okay. There's still a faint glimmer when you reach mm-hmm. the gates of the mirror of Ipswich. Okay. And you hear a voice from the the hostile wraith in your head. Throwing your toys at me will only buy you so much time. He's saying this to he's saying this in my head? Yes. He's not a toy. His name is Robert. I know who he is. Well do you, you son of a bitch. Be gone then. Go hide in your hole. Fuck you. And then you feel the connection break. My head. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The wing is still there. Robert is back where he belongs, but it's going to take him some time. Okay. He's back on the wing? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. And... I like Robert. Robert's a good guy. Yeah, I'm trying to. Some uh, of them. Yep. <laughs> uh, um. uh, you still have the gun. Mm-hmm. It's uh, actually materialized into a holster on your hip. Nice. Okay. And you are at the front gates of Ipswich. And you see a familiar woman standing Mm -hmm. there where she in the skin lands appeared pink, hale, and healthy. Over here, her skin has shrunken. She looks dry and desiccated. Her hair is falling out. Oh, wonderful. And she's arguing with two other wraiths at the front mm-hmm. gates. Both of them are dressed in what would probably be the equivalent of leather armor. They've got uh, short swords made of Stygian steel hanging off of their belts with no hilts or with no uh, scabbards. 
Mm-hmm. But you hear Catherine arguing. Just let me in. I don't know where I I don't know where I'm at. I don't belong here. Please, you just I you, I got to get back to my house. And you hear one of the other guards or you hear one of the guards say, "Ma'am, we have no record of you." in the town rolls. You can wait outside and petition the local death lord when they are holding court. What's a death lord? (laughs) Gonna intervene at all? Yeah, I'm gonna walk up. The two guards immediately focus on you, and both of their hands go down to their swords. At ease, gentlemen. You don't belong here either. I'm very well aware of that, Cher. One of your friends decided to bring me in here. And you want what exactly? Well, it would be kind to go back to where I actually belong, seeing as it, I'm not supposed to be here, but I am here. And we could quickly remedy that situation, and I'll leave. I have nothing here. No harm shall come to either one of you. The two guards seem to step back and deliberate a moment and finally the one who spoke to you sighs he takes a key out from uh, off of his belt very well you and this thing he says looking over to Catherine Mm -hmm. will permit you entry just mind your manners while you're here. They, Absolutely. Can they open the gates? What, what is your name, Shen? Oh, Do you have one? Uh, my name is Claudius. Claudius. Nice, nice Latin name. Nice to make your acquaintance. Well, I am Roman. I see. Um, and you'll see lots of this is what Lars should overdo. Uh, e pluribus unum. Salve, citizen. And Salve. they let you in. Come on, Catherine. She looks at you. I'm saying this as I grab her scabbardly hand and like yank her with me. If it comes out like a like a zombie piece, so what? I'm walking in with Catherine. You, her arm doesn't fall off, but you do get some. There, there are some fingers do crumble and crunch off, and they mm-hmm. hit the the gray powdery soil at your feet. Can I pick him up? Yep. <laughs> okay, I'll pick him up. Oh, it looks like he's dropped a little bit, sugar. Come on in now. And this is where we will end the epilogue. <laughs> okay. I want to sit there and say, well, well, Catherine. I'm so glad to see you. You look wonderful. <laughs> How did you do this? Well, sugar, should you live any more past this time, then... I'll tell you a lot of things, but for right now, you're under my control and under my care. And it's gonna be a wonderful partnership. Love that. <laughs> and I guess I'll close it now. Boop! <laughs> a little, a little. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. 
So um, that was uh, that was it for the uh, season one epilogues here for uh, Psycho Pumps Incorporated. Uh, we will get back to some more Hurkata chicanery later on down the road here maybe april may ish we'll see what happens oh my um, goodness yeah it, we've uh, we'll see london's bleeding is uh, actually going to be um recording here real soon i wish i could be in that game it's like it's so much fun We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I won't make any promises. Uh, we'll, uh, if you ask Sarah nice enough, who knows? <laughs> but um, anyway. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Joe, go ahead and uh, you can uh, tell us where to find you, what you got going on, if anything. Woo! Go ahead. Go ahead I'm pitch so away, glad. Sir. Okay, so hi everybody. I am Joe, better known as DJ Torridor, Nolafang on Twitter. You can find me here and many other places. I'm the ST for Montgomery by Night. We are actually coming back. I finally was got I've got my coterie back in order. There's some reshuffling. Hopefully we're gonna get this out, pumping out, just putting down two people's times and then we'll be back on stream and so you can find out what happened. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna put up a video explaining what's happened in the meantime because we left off at quite a cliffhanger, but that's another story for another day. I am part of other streams, be it vampire, be a werewolf, whatever you can find me. Hire me for games, I don't care. Um, you know, send me spicy DMs, um, come follow me on the hub, you know, you know, only fangs. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I am. I'm here, visible. I am Larchevo. I am uh, Larchevo. I am Dario, and I am all these cool people that you have seen on your screen. So um, again, Patrick and Martley Games, thank you for having me come back. I really enjoy playing Larchevo because he's so mysterious and so funny. And uh, yeah, follow me on the internet. Um, hit up the link tree. Get some merch. Um, Again, Pornhub, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, you name it, I'm there. Anyway, toodles. Get May in. the odds ever be in your favor. Let the good times roll. Laissez les bons temps fouler. Let the good times roll. There we be. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. And we'll be seeing you around with more Psycho Pumps TBD. Yes. Looking forward to it.